Animal Crossing New Horizons is a life simulation game developed by Nintendo for the Nintendo Switch, where we create a character, pick an island, and move to it with a bunch of colorful animal characters. The game takes place in real time, and we can explore the island and do whatever we want, from gathering and crafting items and catching insects and fish, to finding villagers to move in and developing the island into a community. Being on the Switch, the choice of accessibility is limited. The Joy-Con buttons are small and they don't lie flat on the table. And Joy-Con drift is an even bigger issue than usual because of not constantly holding the analog stick. The best Nintendo has to offer is the Pro Controller, with its large analog stick and bigger buttons. It makes the game somewhat accessible, but still tough for the majority of functions that use the LR buttons, such as opening the Nook phone or emotes. On the plus side, the Nintendo Switch Online app also deserves a mention, since it lets you chat and emote without needing the in-game keyboard or shoulder buttons. Usually though, this is where it should end, but unexpectedly, this is where third-party developers really shines through. There are a plethora of options out there, from large arcade sticks to specifically adaptive controllers. But due to lack of proper support, most of them requires cumbersome wiring and workarounds. However, if you saw my last few vids, you already know how much I love touchscreens as an interface option, and this is where phone apps really shine through. Joy-Con Droid is an app that simulates all the features of a Pro Controller, but on a phone or a tablet screen. The app syncs via Bluetooth directly with the Switch console, meaning I could access all the intended functions of the game without the hassle of all the extra wires. The app deserves its own video, which I will link to when it's up, but long story short, I am able to enjoy the game fully thanks to it. Note that this video is not sponsored, the app is free, but does contain a one-time in-app purchase to remove the ads. I will leave a link in the description for those who might be interested, but more importantly, those who might actually need it to play. Therapy-wise, Animal Crossing is not a physically demanding game by any stretch of the imagination, but the game can be surprisingly good from proving fine motor skills. I remember the rush of catching my first tarantula, which forced me to use both my hands for the first time, and failing over and over before finally succeeding. I remember coming up with a unique strategy to catching summer bugs so they won't fly away and getting shoulder cramps from chasing after a banded dragonfly. Before I knew it, I graduated from using touchscreen to using a pro controller as my condition improved. Not only was I getting better, but I was having a lot of fun doing it. Value-wise, Animal Crossing is a full-price console game, so you'll be sinking $60 into it, plus all the necessary gear to play. That being said, the over 1,000 hours of combined playtime amongst my family members should be self-explanatory. Even now, the game developers promised new events and updates for up to three years from release, so the game still has lots to do. I've, um, I've said a lot during this review already, but this section will probably be the longest section and also the most personal. The amount of emotional support this game gave me and my family is beyond words, but I will try to explain anyways. I'm sure you all know Animal Crossing came out during a time when people needed it most, and in my case it was no exception. I was eight months into my recovery, my family was stuck at home, and I still believed that I wasn't well enough to play any console game that required a controller. In fact, my wife, who wasn't that big of a gamer, was the one who played for me. She would log into my account, play games like Yoshi's Craft World and Link's Awakening while I backseat. This time was supposed to be the same. She'd log into my account, create a character, then play it for me. However, I knew the game was multiplayer, so I asked her to log into her account, created my character, set up so that she joins in as player two, and then I said, pass me the controller. We ran around the dirt lot for a bit and sat on the bench there and took a picture. Then she cried and cried and cried and 
I mean, sure, the accident was tough for me, but she was the one who took it hardest. Imagine like eight months, you know, not being able to go outside together, in a certain future, not sure if things are going to be ever be okay again. Then this happened, and somehow we knew at that moment that, you know, things were going to be okay. Sure, we have memories of the past, but we could always create new ones. And I find it a little poetic that my account is the one where she is playing and she's I'm the one playing her account, you know, with each other. Then I proceeded to leave her in the dust while she gets stung by wasps. And here lies Animal Crossing's strongest point, the memories created along the way. Either way, playing with family or achieving things in game, Animal Crossing seems to always have something to do, something to share, and in this age, many online communities to join. Just another example for what we could do, our family is always racing to see who will be the first one to donate fish, bug, or art in the museum. I actually have to give them a handicap and say, I'm not gonna fish for the first day of the month. You guys take all the time you need. <laughs> Even with that handicap, I was the first one who managed to catch all the bugs and fish and sea creatures. I even made a rock garden with seasonally rotating bushes, which took ages. I made an area in front of the museum with all the fish models. I made an orchard with all the trees. I made a great stone from a late dad that contained every single flower. The list goes on. If I could give a rating of 100% for this category, I would. Screw it, let's put a star next to the bar or something for good measure. That alone should guarantee Animal Crossing New Horizons a golden key. The strong emotional core in the game is beyond any other game of the life sim genre could offer. And while its accessibility is limited, the options out there are there if you look hard enough. There's also a surprising amount of therapeutic use and despite its asking price, I have no doubt how this game became the best-selling game on the Switch. That's it for now. If you like this content and would like to support the channel, please like and share the video. If you have content that you'd like me to review, please comment below. This project is the collaborative effort just between me and my wife, Fata, so any form of support is appreciated. Thank you.